Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you today. I'm really excited to be collaborating with Chenin Natasamanat, aka The Data Professor, to bring you a video or a couple videos on how to build out a more advanced data science portfolio. Now, we're gonna be doing this using GitHub Pages and Hugo, and it's a lot more advanced than the simplified data science portfolio that I built before. You can check out that video linked above and below if you want kind of a more basic version that'll take you just a little bit less time. I highly recommend checking out the Data Professor's YouTube channel. He has incredible tutorials on data science and bioinformatics. He also has a really cool new series about data science of virtual internships that are extremely relevant for people who are looking at internships now, especially with all that's going on in the world. A lot of traditional internships are being canceled. So I would, again, highly recommend that you check out his channel. There's a lot of very useful information there. Without further ado, why don't I show you what we're gonna be building and then I'll pass it off to the data professor. So let's go over here. You can see that this portfolio is definitely more visually appealing than the one that I had built before. We can see recent projects on the homepage. We can also go into the about section where you can put a little, a picture of yourself, have some about you, uh, and you can also kind of improve the, the theme and the formatting there. We also have a contact page where you can put all of your relevant links here. Finally, you have another project view where again, this is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the previous version I wrote. We also have these different buttons where you can link to all of your different social media websites. So you can follow me on Twitter at Kenji underscore DS. You can go on my YouTube, LinkedIn, my personal website, etc. So I think that this is definitely a step up from what I had built previously. And this is something that could really open eyes of employers or recruiters, whoever's looking at it, because one, it is so clean and visually appealing. It shows that you can communicate this information extremely well. Now I'm gonna pass it off again to the data professor to show you actually how to get this built. Thanks Ken for the awesome introduction. Before beginning, perhaps a brief introduction about what is Hugo. Hugo is a static site generator that essentially converts a set of markdown files into static HTML and CSS files. So it does this by processing parameters from the configuration file, particularly the config.toml, which I will be showing you in just a moment. So aside from being able to export the markdown files as static HTML and CSS files, Hugo allows you to preview the website that you are building dynamically, meaning that whenever you make any changes to the config.toml file and the markdown files, you'll be instantly able to see how the website will look like. So the changes will appear instantaneously. So that is using the Hugo server command. So you'll be seeing that in just a moment as well. Okay, so that should give you sufficient background about how to use Hugo. So without further ado, let's get started in building your data science portfolio. So the first thing that you wanna do now is head over to the Hugo website by typing in gohugo.io, enter. And so this is the website that you're going to see. So let's have a look at some of the example websites that you could develop using Hugo. So let's click on the showcase. Okay, so this is a collection of websites that uses Hugo to dynamically generate the HTML files. Okay, so many are pretty good looking websites, including the Linode doc as well using Hugo. And let's click on the themes. So these are the collection of themes that you could use to customize the look of your website. And so for this tutorial, we're gonna use the Ananke theme. So let's search for that. Control F, A-N-A-N-K-E. All right, so it's gonna be this one, Ananke. So you wanna click on that one. All right, and then you wanna click on the download. And so this will take you to the GitHub of the Ananke theme. And you wanna download this by heading over to the clone or download and clicking on that one and then click on the download zip. And then this should download the zip file into your computer. So let me open up my file explorer, go to download, and then I'm gonna move this onto the desktop. 
And so let's extract it on the desktop. Okay, so it should look like this. So the first thing that you wanna do here is let's have a look at the contents of the file. And so notice that there is the example site here. And so you wanna create a copy of that because we're gonna use that for building our website. And then you wanna paste it in your desktop as well. And then we're gonna head back. And then you wanna rename this to Ananki. And then you wanna move this into the example site and then double click on it. And now the Ananki folder is now inside the example site. Okay, and then you wanna create a folder called themes. And now we're gonna move the Ananki into the themes folder. All right, and so that should set you up for the further steps that we're gonna do. And now let's go ahead and download the Hugo. All right, so let's have a look how to install Hugo onto your computer. So on the Hugo website, it says that you can install the program in a couple of seconds, given that you have the following package manager installed on your computer. So if you have a Mac OS and you have Brew, you can easily install it by using Brew install Hugo. If you have the Choco package manager on Windows, you could just easily type in Choco install Hugo dash confirm. Or if you have the Linux package manager called snap you could install it by typing in snap install hugo okay and so let's say that we want to install it in a light way meaning that we don't need to have these package managers and we will just download the binary release of hugo and then we're going to use that for the tutorial so we're not going to download anything bulky and so we're just going to use a simple binary release and so let's head over to GitHub of Hugo. At the top right, click on GitHub. Okay, and so we're gonna download the binary release by scrolling down and you're gonna see the release on the tab here. So you wanna click on that. All right, and then scroll down a bit. So today it's gonna be version 0 0.71.0. And let's scroll down some more. Here we go. So depending on which operating system you have, you wanna download the ones that will work for your computer. So let's say that if you have a Linux 64-bit, you wanna download that and install it. Or if you have a Mac OS, you wanna download the 64 or 32-bit, depending on your computer architecture. And for this, I'm using a Windows, so I'm gonna use the Windows 64-bit because my Windows is 64-bit. So let's click on that. And it's downloading into my computer. And so what I want to do is we're going to need only the hugo.exe file. So we're going to export that out. And for the hugo.exe file, we're going to move it inside the example site folder, which is right here. And so you want to head over to your PowerShell. Let's get our text editor ready, if we have any. All right, so I have Adam. Adam is a pretty good and free text editor. And it's created by GitHub, right here. GitHub icon, font size is a bit too small. that be better maybe 28 all right all right so let's head over to our desktop folder without s work all right it works but it looks pretty awful here um, all right I just need to go into the example website and let me expand this. All right, so it looks better now. All right, so we wanna head over to trying Hugo. We see that there is the hugo.exe file. Let's see if that works. Hugo version. It's not recognized. Hmm, what dot slash Hugo works? All right, it works. So we need to type dot slash and then Hugo. So dot slash 
will mean the current working directory. And so let's create the server for the website that will allow you to dynamically preview how it looks like. So you want to type in dot slash Hugo and then server. Enter. Okay, so it's saying that the Go Hugo theme is not found. Okay, let's head over to the folder. So the important thing is the config.toml file. Okay, so we're just going to open it up in here. So the theme is called Ananki. And so the themes directory, we're just going to comment that out. And that's all we need to do. Just rename the theme to be Ananki. And let's try it again. And we need to go to this localhost colon 1313. So localhost colon 1313. All right, so it's working. So this is the example website that we're going to hack and use it as a template for making our own data science portfolio. And so this configuration file will allow you to put in essential information that Hugo will use to dynamically create the static HTML and CSS files. So for example, here, the title is the top left title that you see here. So if we want to use Kenji's name here, and then let's say that we want to save it and notice that the website will dynamically update itself, right? If I type in Kenneth and save it, then you see that it dynamically update itself. Okay, so I think that you will get the concept here. Okay, and so let's head back to the website. Let's look at the contents of it. Okay, so you see here that there are four links that you could click on about articles contact and the twitter icon and if you click on the twitter icon it'll open up a new web page and if we click on about it will be the about page and if we click on articles so in here you could have multiple articles inside right like for example chapters one two three four five and let's click on contact and so the contact will have a form where you could submit your name, email address, or message. And so we're going to skip the contact form in order to make the tutorial more concise. But you can explore around this option as well. And so for this tutorial, we're going to just put in simple social media links. Okay. And so the actual website will look like this. Let's head over to dataprofessor.github.io slash Ken underscore portfolio and so this is the finished product of how the data science portfolio will look like and so notice that at the top left there's the name kenji and at the middle here is data science portfolio and then here you can type in like hi my name is kenji and then you have some description here and scrolling down, you're going to see some of the projects that you have. Remember, I told you that there are articles 1, 2, or chapter 1, 2, 3. And so we modified that to be project 1 and project 2. And so in this, you could have more than one project. Let's say you have 10 projects, then you have 1 through 10. And so let's click on one of them. And so this will use the image that we're going to see below. And so here, these are all written in Markdown. And this is the image. And then we also have a link to the GitHub repository. And so this will link to Ken's GitHub. All right. And so let's have a look at the contact. And so this is the contact page. And notice that the form is not shown here for conciseness. So we're simply using the URL of the various social media platforms. And let's click on the about. And so in the about, you could customize the message that you're going to Put here right and so you could also upload your photo as well and you could have a short description about yourself so all of the info are taken from Ken's YouTube channel description and so this is the finished product of how it will look like and aside from the Twitter link there is also the YouTube link and LinkedIn and GitHub so all of this are dynamically created all we need to do is edit some of the markdown file and also the configuration file that's it so nothing to design here just simple editing of the content files and the configuration file file along with uploading the necessary images.
Okay, so let's have a look at the structure of the directories and the files that will be in this folder of the example website. Okay, so the markdown files will be contained within the content folder. Let's click on that. And so notice that we have the about page. So let's click on the about folder here. All right, so let's have a look at this file inside Adam. Click on content and then about and then index.md. All right, here you go. Okay, so this is the example website, not the Kenji's website. And so the about here, title here is right here, title about. And the hi, my name is Kenji here would be in the description. And this is the figure image as well. And the figure image is right here. And then the text here is the text right here. Okay, so let's head over back to the folder about. And then we also have the post. And so the post here contains chapter one through chapter six. So it's essentially here, projects. So we're calling it projects, right? So the projects are the chapters in here. Let's head over back. And there's index and contact. Let's head over back to Adam. All right, so it's right here, index. This is the first page that you're gonna see first page is right here so this is the fir first page so I think it's better to have a look at the yeah the example so the first page is right here okay let's try changing this to something hello world All right and it dynamically updates the website for you so you could have fun and edit the website as you go along And then the text right here is right here. Hello. And then we just type in in order to see that it works. Right? It works. Okay. So the index.md at the root folder is right here. It's right here. So it's inside the content folder. And it's index.md. This is the first web page that you see when you go to the website. And the contact is right here. Contact.md is this one. So let's edit this one. All right, so notice that there's the form and we're gonna delete the form. Let's copy from Kenji's portfolio here. So let's say that we're gonna recreate this. And so let's just copy it all here. So I'm gonna show you to create this from scratch. All right, so let's have a look. Let's say that we don't format anything, all right? Let's save it and see how it looks like. Okay, so notice that this is the one locally, just in case you might get confused which one is which one. And this is the one on GitHub already. All right, so you see that the formatting is not looking good here. This is without using the table. And so let's add the table element here. And it's simply by using the pipe character. We're adding just a simple pipe here at the end of the name of the platform and we also need this three dash and then the pipe character and then three dash all right and then save it and then it's properly formatted all right so now we have the contact page created properly all right and so what about the articles let's modify that to become the project let's click on the post and let's click on index.md. So notice that you're gonna see index.md in the post, in the about, and in the root folder of content. Notice that there's gonna be three index.md. So make note that each of these index.md is essentially the index file. And so in making websites, the index.html is the default page that you will see whenever you type in the URL followed by the folder or the subfolder. And when you don't type in index.html, it is inferred. And so the thing is for a typical website like this, we have the URL domain. For example, it could be like something.com slash and then post. 
slash okay so this is the URL and so essentially what is happening is that there is a file called index dot something it could be index dot html it could be index dot php it could be index dot asp okay and so in this case it is index dot md right here index dot md and so Hugo will use this to maintain the structure that this is the root file of this particular directory. And because this is the root directory, the index.md here will be the page that you will see upon clicking on the website. So it's essentially this web page. And upon clicking on the about, and so it's going to refer to the index.md inside the about folder. And if you click on articles, it's going to refer to the index.md in the post folder right here. And if you click on the contact, okay, so the contact is having a name of his own. But if you were to create a folder called contact, and then you could call this index.md and put that inside the contact folder, right? So it will have a similar structure to this about. And actually the structure of the about could essentially be created in this form as well, okay? So it's very versatile, all right? And so let's resume back to creating our website. And so now we have already created the contact. And so let's go ahead and modify the articles to be the project that we want to showcase. Projects. Okay, so I'm going to use this as an example. And so we want to click on the post and we're going to modify this chapter one to be project one and we're going to modify chapter two to be project two. And so for simplicity, we're going to delete the other files. Okay, so I'm going to modify this. So, all right, so let's start with the index.md, which is the easiest to create. And title, we're going to rename this to become projects. Okay. And so let's head over here and notice that the name is changed to project. All right, so it's changed to projects now. And we're going to say just example data science projects right here. Save it and it's automatically updated here. And so we need now to change the chapter one and chapter two to become projects one and projects two. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's copy this back to the Adam and click on chapter one. And so in order to prevent confusion, let's rename this to become project one. Project one. And then save. Let's rename this to become project two. Project two, enter. All right, and let's edit the project one here. And so the description will be project. So I have already copied that project one data science salary estimator. Oh wait, the description is right here actually. A tool that is right here. A tool that estimates data science salaries, period. And the title here, it's going to be project one. Okay. And then we're going to copy this. We're going to delete that text. And so we're going to create bullet points in markdown style. And so you could use asterisk. And let's have a look at project one. As you see here, now it's changed to project one. All right. And the description is shown here. Project one data science salary estimator. And so these are bullet points that we copied from the example website. And notice that the date here is April 9, 2017. You could modify the date as well right here. 
and we could make it 2020 and we could make it May 9, for example, right? And the date will be automatically updated here. All right, and so we just need to add the image. And I noticed that on the other page, on the about, we had some code here that we could borrow. So let's copy this. Head over back to project one. So the code is inside the index MD of about folder. And we're gonna just paste it here and the images, we're gonna call it something else. And we're just gonna delete the title here. All right, and so the thing is we need to download this image. So why don't we do that? Right click on it, save image as, and then we're gonna save it directly to the folder here. So it's gonna be static. So all of your images will reside in the static folder. Click on images folder. And so let's save it in here. And let's see the name again. I forgot the name. And so the name is positionsbystate.png. All right, save and let's head over back here. All right, so it works now. This is the image that we have just saved. So let's, and notice that the projects here, the name of the link is now projects. All right, so we have project one finished and let's do project two. Click on project two, go to the example page, click on projects, click on project two. All right, so the name is project two, ball image classifier. So title is project two, ball image classifier, description, a ball classifier to identify balls from different sports save and then we're gonna copy all of this text here save it and then we need to get the image save the image and same location let's have a look at the name of the image so we could right click on the image and then copy image address and then paste it here temporarily and the name of the image is matrix underscore results.png. Paste it somewhere, go back to project one, copy the code here for the figure. Paste it here, copy the name of the image, replace it instead of the previous image name, save it, and let's have a look. Project two. All right, so it looks perfectly, but we forgot to copy the GitHub link. And so let's add the GitHub link at the bottom of the image. Let's head over back to Adam and then type in link to GitHub repository and then parenthesis. And then we need to copy the GitHub link. Let's find the link in here. The one that is on the GitHub page. Right click, copy link address and head over back to the atom. Oh wait, this is for project two. So let's do it for project one here. So type in link to GitHub repository, parenthesis, and then the link, save it. And let's do the same for project two. Project two, copy the link from GitHub repo, head over back to Adam, go to project two, put in the link, save it so now notice that we have the link for both project one and two and so let's have a look and so the link to github repo is right here for project one and project two and let's see if it works all right so it works that's good all right so now we have already created contact and projects all right and so now let's have a look at the about page so let's go to the about folder and then the index.md and we're just gonna delete these and delete the title here. All right, so let's go back to the example website here of Kenji portfolio, which is on github.io. Click on the about. All right, and so we're gonna copy this and it's gonna be in the description here. Paste it save it 
And then we're gonna copy the text here and then paste it below the image. And then we're gonna save the image, save it in the same folder, which is static images. So the image is ken-g.png. Head over back to Adam and let's replace the name here. Ken-g.png, save it. And let's head over back here and the about page has been updated. All right, very good. But notice that in the example here, we have other images, right? But for this, we're still using the default. Like if we click on project, it is the image that I've taken from the website on Splash. Let's have a look. And so you can also get free stock photos from here. So I think that I typed in data and yeah, it's this one that I've used. So let's click on that one. Okay, so let's right click on the download free button. And so that will allow us to save directly into the static images folder. And let's see. Let's find a good photo for the front page. So I think I use this one. And then you wanna right click on the download free, save link as, save it. I think that's all I've used, right? So this is one about, oh, another one about, and then, okay, so I've used three. Actually, this would also look good as well. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, let's click on that one. Right click, save link as, and save it. Okay, so this aerial image is used for the front page. Let's see what's the name of that file again. Go to static images and it is this one. So we want to copy the name of the file. Head over to Adam and click on the index.md, which is at the root folder, not inside the about, not inside the post, but the index.md, which is at the root folder, at the content folder. And notice that the featured image here, just replace the name with the new image that you want, save it. And so the background image here is the coding background photo. So it's this one. So we're gonna copy the name. Head over to Adam, click on the post, click on the index.md, and then, okay, I wanna copy the featured image here. Okay. Okay, anything else? Front page is done, project page, Contact, it's the default about page. Okay, so the about page is this photo. And then back to Adam and go to the about index.md and featured image will be this one. Make sure to have the path. This one too. Check the index.md. Okay, it has the path. All right, let's head over back to our own website and notice that the project page now has the updated background photo. The about page also has the updated background photo and the front page has also the updated background photo right here. Okay, and notice that we still have to modify this to be reflecting our project photo. So it should look like this, right? Okay, and some more tweaking of the code. Let's go to the index.md because this is the index.md. So index.md at the root folder and the featured image. Let's have a look. Okay, so featured image here is the one that you see here, the aerial shot. All right, I see. I see. So we have to go to the project1.md and right here, featured image. And so the featured image should be the name of the, right here, the name of the file, image file. But actually you could also use any other image that you like, for example, from the Unsplash website. 
but for simplicity we're just going to use the same image that we used for the example website that we have already built on the github page and now let's go to the project2.md and let's copy the name here and we need the path as well images matrix results all right so let's have a look all right so the front page now has the image reflecting the project all right and so this comes with a read more button as well. If you click on read more, it'll go into the web page of the project. All right, so, and so let's say that you don't like this tag, you could just delete it out from your projects, okay? Project one, you could just delete the tag. All right, so the tags will be gone. There we go. So now it looks exactly like the one on the GitHub page and we have a local version here. Okay, let's modify the name here and here as well so that it looks exactly alike. Hello world to be data science portfolio. And hi, my name is Kenji to be in the description. There you go. Now it looks exactly alike, right? Oh no, not yet right here does it look exactly like now okay so there are links to the social media platform so we need to config the configuration file let's move back up one folder and click on the config.toml file and then we're gonna have to scroll down and right here so you want to put in your twitter your instagram your youtube and all that let's put in the twitter here youtube linkedin github and there are more, right? Even your Facebook and others, Instagram, right? And most importantly of all, notice that when we deploy the website onto the GitHub page, we need to copy this link and then we need to put it inside the base URL right here. Okay, but we have already created the one for Ken Portfolio. So let's say that we want to create a new one. What should we call it? Let's call it Ken Portfolio 2. And we're almost there. We're almost there. We just now need to convert this markdown files into static HTML and CSS files. Because what we're seeing here is just a local version of the website. So in order to put it onto the GitHub, we have to convert this into the static HTML and CSS file. So we need to head over back to the PowerShell. So you want to cancel this web server and type in control and C. It doesn't stop it. Okay, so it stops maybe a couple of times. Now it stopped. So go to the config.toml file and then we want to type in canonify urls equal true. Save it. And then we're gonna run the hugo-d command again and the files will be updated. So it takes only 157 milliseconds. So the next step to do now is to open up your GitHub. All right, so we click on repository and I click on the new and I'm gonna type in Ken underscore portfolio underscore two because this is the second attempt. Second attempt in making the data science portfolio. And we can initialize it with the readme if we like. Create repository. All right, and so we want to upload files and choose your files. Go to the desktop go to the example site go to public and you want to select everything okay and then open 
And so... Oh, there's only five files. Nah, that doesn't work. Let's try it again. Open up the folder here. And I think it's better that we just drag and drop it. So we're gonna drag and drop everything. So it will maintain the structure. So the folder and the sub contents. So there's a total of 31 files. So wait a bit. 20, 22, 23, 30, 31. All right, it's finished. Now we just click on commit change. Wait a bit. Processing your files. All right. All right, so we wanna now click on the settings. Scroll down and under GitHub pages. So by default, it's currently disabled and you want to click on the drop down and say use the master branch for GitHub pages. And then that's it. It's going to reload the page again. And the second time around, it'll say that your site is ready to be published at and then the URL. So let's click on this one. All right, there you go, it works now. So it is the Canonify URL that is causing the issue, meaning that the path that it expects was not shown properly. So it couldn't find anything. And so upon using the Canonify URL to be true, the relative becomes correct. Okay, and so there you have it, a beautiful and nice looking data science portfolio built using Hugo. And so you could experiment this, play around with it, modify it, add projects to it. And so your data science portfolio will expand and grow and flourish. And so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Okay, so that's all and I'll hand it back to you, Ken. Shannon, thank you so much again for that awesome tutorial. Now, I really hope for everyone watching that a portfolio website like this helps you to get your foot in the door for jobs, helps you look really presentable for recruiters or, or anyone who's reviewing your work uh, for a potential job. So thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.